There's yeah. On the big Gucci. Nice. Woo. Feels decent. So today I'm on Monty or Mont Lake. I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is. Uh, but I'm just south of the town of Kamloops, central BC. And the reason I really wanted to come to this lake was not because the fish are particularly large, although there's some fish up to one and a half pounds in here. But I primarily wanted to come here because this is one of the lakes that BC Fisheries is transitioning to an all-female triploid kokanee fishery, which is really intriguing. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about the implications of an all-female triploid kokanee fishery and why they would even want to do such a thing. So we have lots of triploid fishery, triploid rainbow trout fisheries in the United States. And, you know, triploidy is used as a way to basically create sterile fish. Um, there's lots of reasons they want to do that to avoid, um, you know, establishing feral or wild populations um, to reduce conflict with other species. Or in some cases, they do it because, especially in trout, triploid trout tend to get much larger than their diploid uh, counterparts. But that's not the case in kokanee, and I'll talk about that why. Although there is kind of an exception in that you might get some larger fish um, later down the line. But let's see if we can get this first fish in the boat here. This one hit on pink hoochie and silver moon jelly dodger, which is just kind of my go-to start anytime I go to any lake. It's just a confidence setup for me. Just one of those uh, setups that seems to work everywhere I go, and that's why I tend to use it. And that's really not a bad size kokanee. Dang. I mean, that's a solid 15, 16 inch fish. Healthy looking. All right, so there's my first Monty Lake kokanee. Good looking fish. I mean, I'd be happy with that in any of our Washington waters. Looks very healthy, good body condition. I'm not really sure if this one is actually female triploid because they have intermittently been incorporating diploid kokanee into the stock here. And I don't know if that's just because it's more difficult to produce the female triploids and there's just a limit, uh, limited availability of them. But um, so this one could be diploid or it could be triploid um, because of their longer lifespans, which I'm gonna talk about in a sec. But still a great start to the morning. I need to get my other rod deployed so let's see if I can get some more fish. Well, the graph is just lit up with kokanee right now, so. I can just get some gear down there to him. I probably can start catching some more. At 25 to 28 feet right now. Get this flutter bug down there. Get to work. So I have the downrigger set around 25 to 26 feet. And then over here I'm doing snap weights with three ounces clipped in well first I let out 30 feet of line and then I snapped in the snap weight of three ounces and then I let out another 60 feet interesting I just went right back over the path that I did earlier this morning I had two bites I haven't had any Oop, there we go I was wondering if it was gonna be a directionality thing or not oh he's off Sometimes you get those directionality bites. I hate those mornings because it's like you're only really fishing half the time. I think it's generally well known that Americans are a little bit grumpier than Canadians. And I figured out why on this trip. Because y'all sleeping in. <laughs> Every time I come up the lakes, I get the lake at like five in the morning. Nobody here. It's, I'll have the whole lake to myself to like seven or eight most days. And you guys are very well rested. You really value sleep. When I was staying at the resort in the Caribou, 
several of the other anglers who were staying there lamented the fact that I was getting up so early and leaving at you know, 4.30, 4.40 every day to go fishing. But I just know those early morning kokanee bites are so important. Plus, you got to take time to find the fish where they're at and exploit that morning window. I could run two pink lures, which would probably be the smartest thing, but I always like to run different colors just because that's the fun in doing the exact same thing on both rods. Kokanee fishing is all about exploring different ways to catch these fish and trying out different colors and stuff. It's part of the fun of it for me. Okay, I'm gonna go to Wiki Up Sunrise, Hoochie, and four and a half inch tear drop dodger from Paulina Peak. Their Wiki Up Sunrise is basically their orange chartreuse combinations. And uh, sometimes it can be pretty deadly, especially low light. There's one on the dropper. Nice. This fish put up a good fight. So in Washington state, we actually use a lot of triploid rainbow trout. And the reason the state stocks triploids is because, primarily because they get quite a bit bigger because every spring trout would normally develop gonads. So they would either develop milt sacs or eggs and that comes at a cost to their growth. But, but if they're a sterile fish, they don't have to do that. And so, you know, each year that a triploid is alive versus a diploid, the you'll see a growth advantage in rainbow trout. But you don't see that in kokanee, right? Because kokanee only spawn one time in their life and then normally die. And so a triploid and a diploid kokanee are basically going to be very similar in how large they get. And they are sterile, right? So, but what's interesting is the male kokanee will still turn colors and what we call senescence, that is pre-programmed death. They will still undergo that at age four like any normal kokanee. But the female kokanee actually will survive out to age five. At least some of them will. And so you'll get uh, a little bit larger fish in those fifth year fish. Now, you won't get a ton of those because a lot of fifth year kokanee are going to be, you know, either captured by anglers or killed by predators, eagles and ospreys and things like that. But there is that chance of, you know, catching a, a much larger fish because it's stayed chrome out to year five. And that's why it's kind of neat because you'll see on all these ice fisheries up here in BC for kokanee, you know, they'll be pulling some really large fish through the ice in the winter that are chrome. And, you know, they're pulling like 20 inch fish. And I'm absolutely convinced a lot of times those are those fifth year female triploids in a lot of these lakes. That's a nice fish. There we go. Got it. Cool. That's even bigger than the one I got this morning. That's a nice fish. They're really long. I mean, their body condition is good. It's not like incredibly deep and thick like some of the caribou fish I was catching, but they've got great length on them. They look good. Limits five in Canada, BC. Which, given the encounter rates I had up in uh, the caribou, seemed to kind of make sense to me. I think BC does a better job of not overstocking their lakes like Washington State does. In fact, a lot of states in the United States tend to overstock kokanee. I think that's because some some of our lakes. Uh, that have kokanee or multi-species lakes, and I think I think they stock them more as a a, a bait, or, you know, food resource for some other fish in those lakes. But on the, some other lakes that are almost pure kokanee or just kokanee rainbow, I still feel like they overstock them. You get a bunch of dinks. One thing I've noticed on my trip up here in Canada is that every time I catch kokanee, the loons like come in closer. They're like they're like, what's he doing? 
What's he using? I think they're just curious, but I've definitely noted that like the loons will just kind of keep their distance and then when you pull a couple fish up over the rails, they're like, I'm gonna go see what that guy's doing. A few years ago, I had a loon t try and take a big trout that I caught on a lake down in Washington. I looked down, there was I, this huge animal underneath the kayak and it was, my trout was right here and this loon was chasing my trout. He didn't get it though, but it's crazy. Oh. There's a fish all coming down right here. That's a nice fish. He unclipped it himself. Yeah, so as I see it, these, you know, this all female triploid approach is kind of a neat way to whoa create some quality, potentially quality kokanee. And I've seen Wow, this one's taking some line. This is a nice fish. Or just a hot fish. Staying down deep. But you know, every once in a while, I follow the forums here in the in BC, and I'll see somebody like just pull an absolute tank out of a lake that's generally producing smaller fish. I'm absolutely convinced that that's these triploid kokanee in their fifth year. This one's a bulldog. Staying deep. Really chunky one though. Come on. Come on. Wow, this is a nice fish. Got him. There we go. Dang. Beautiful fish in here. I mean, they're like picture perfect kokanee. Look at that fish. I mean, that's just perfect body condition. Very clean and healthy <laughs> three down they love micro hoochies on monty i love micro hoochies because when i fish micro hoochies i go home with limits that makes me feel good looks like this area burned i'm not sure when but it must have been beautiful before the fire because there are a lot of trees gone and i can smell fire from a nearby burning fire near stump lake you can see a little bit of smoke in the air but it's not too bad but it's definitely become one of the uh the norms of summer now smoke and fires which kind of sucks used to really look forward to summer now i kind of look more forward to fall <laughs> In spring before it's smoky that's what you get for a hundred years of fire suppression and a warming planet basically I launched on the north end it's too bad you guys don't have a decent launch here that's it's a pretty rough launch I think they'd spend a little money and just throw down a concrete ramp for this lake as big as it is. Uh, but I just came straight across. I didn't see anything coming across the lake. And then when I looked at the bathymetry for the lake, there's kind of a narrow point where there's some steep drop offs. But my experience, uh, it's oftentimes these, is to kind of go to where these ledges are and then just work my way back and forth across them. And usually I find them. At, Seems more often than not I find kokanee hanging on the ledges than I'd find them dead center in the middle of the lake. When I got that fish on the downrigger, I was checking to make sure I didn't leave my drink and food in the cooler. That is the worst thing that ever happens, like when you leave like your your tea or soda in the in the ice chest and then you forget and you throw fish in there. And then when you try and drink your all day, all you do is sniff kokanee up your nose. It's not very enjoyable. Kokanee tastes great. They fight great. They do not smell great. I'm gonna admit, I'm not a huge fan of salmon smell. Ooh, there we go. Home dropper. It's 
So one of the things I really want to dispel, though, is this myth that, you know, triploid trout are genetically engineered. Genetic engineering has a really specific term where you're splicing genes from one species into another. That is not what is happening here. So what typically happens with triploidy or how they uh, create triploid fish is they will stress the... Uh, <laughs> is they will, uh, shortly after the eggs are fertilized, they will stress them typically with heat, um, although they can do other things too. And that causes the eggs to retain an extra set of chromosomes. So it's just the same set of genes, they just have an extra set, which makes them sterile when they grow up. But it's still just kokanee genes, right? So it's not like they're putting genes from another species in there. Woo! This thing is heavy. These Monty Lake fish fight like champs. They like bulldog. They don't jump or anything. They just make really hard, deep runs. That's what you get when you get healthy fish, though, I guess, is you're going to get hard fighters. I bet they're going to cut amazing if they fight this hard. I see a tail. I see a big fat kokanee. Got him. Cool. That's number four for the day. They're all basically cookie cutters. Really healthy looking fish. In that 15 to 16 inch bracket, I'd say. Oop. There's one on the pink hoochie. On the turn. Woo. Now, I know several states in the United States have experimented with triploid, kokanee, Washington, California, Idaho. And I guess in the context of just trying to create a sterile population that won't self-sustain or establish, that makes sense. But if you really want to create a fishery with opportunities for larger fish, then it really only makes sense in the context of the all-female triploid, because the males are going to die at age four anyways and basically be the same size. So I think BC's got, got the right thing in mind in terms of trying to produce slightly improved kokanee fisheries. Loons are going crazy. Hopefully we can get number five here in the boat. And there we go. That's number five for the day. Five big fat money fish. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful kokanee. Look at that. Awesome. All right, so that's my fifth and final Monty Lake kokanee of the morning. It's been a really great trip up to Canada, even though the weather was really difficult and challenging the beginning of the trip up in the Caribou, and it kind of killed the bite. Still managed to find some decent fish, and it really improved as the week went on. But I had a really good time here, and people here are super awesome and friendly. I really enjoyed my time fishing for kokanee in British Columbia. All right, I'll put links to all of the lures I use below and special thanks to Paulina Peak for making this trip possible. I mean, even if you can't support them through their purchases, just be sure and send them a note just to say thanks for supporting my channel. They really do make it possible for me to do this sustainably. All right. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye.